So, hi, this is Peggy Melanson, uh, new to the Western Massachusetts for the last nine years. And yes, I do have a Boston accent. You'll have to understand that it really is pronounced Worcester. It's not Worcester, it's Worcester. And m what I'm here for is to let you know that it's possible for anyone to become an Olympic torchbearer. All you have to do is find out who is sponsoring for the next, the, the next Winter Olympics and the next Summer Olympics. And then it, find out how you can become one. Usually it's because they want people to write an essay. And the hint that I have to give is that when you find out what they want, you have to do exactly what they want. Not more, not less. If you want to write an essay and they have certain words in it like special, you want to repeat the words. If they say it should be only 50 words long, never do 51. You do 50. I had my students, I had a Finding the Courage to Create writing workshop in Boston, and the group of us got together and wrote this essay. And the students themselves wrote the essay, and one of them signed it, and that's how I managed to win the opportunity to carry this 2002 Olympic torch. And I got to carry it in the, my hometown. Just to tell you that you have to be brave. Fear is the worst thing that you can possibly do to yourself because as my, bro my big brother once told me, if you don't ask, the answer is always no. So what happened was I was supposed to carry this Olympic torch in some other city other than Somerville. And yes, it's pronounced Somerville. And I didn't want to have to go to Gloucester. I think it was Gloucester. I'm not sure where it was. But in any case, I didn't want to carry it there. I wanted to carry it in my own hometown at that, at that time. So I called the people up at the Olympics and said, I'm from Somerville. I'm old. I don't want to carry it far away. I would like to carry this torch in my own hometown. People would rather see it there than someplace else, and no one else is carrying one in Somerville. So I got a few phone call a few minutes later from someone that said, okay, he whispered. He said, okay, it's all set. You're carrying it in Somerville. So this is, this is the picture of me carrying the torch with my helpmate. He's a nice fellow. Where is he? Here he is, right over here. And we carried it. I don't remember the exact distance, but we carried it. And I remember him looking at that torch so longingly and he, he finally told me when his family was going to be on the road and I remember saying why they can't stop me I I can do this so I said where when is your family point them out when we get to where your family is so finally as we're going down the street he ends up he pointed and he said there's my family over there and I said okay and I just handed him the torch so that he could walk past his family with the torch in his hand. But listen, as soon as we got past his family, I grabbed it back. So we ended up at the, at the end, and I lit the other fellow's torch, and then the crowd came. And I remember my kids were there. And I, we'll have to show you the, the, the picture of the sign that my daughter had when we showed up at City Hall in Cambridge. And there was a, she had a sign that she was waving on the front steps. So it was really a wonderful, wonderful time for me. And it's one of the things that I've learned from this experience is that you have to be brave. You have to get over your fear. And it's like, do it anyway, as people say. And one of the things, places that I learned that at was at Somerville Community Access TV. It's more of, sort of like here at uh, Amherst Television. It's a community access television station. And that means the people in the community can come here and do their own shows. They can do their, uh, they, can, they learn how to use cameras. A lot of cities don't have that. And one of the things that happened as a result of being part of the Somerville Community Access TV is I found out that I wasn't afraid to be in front of a camera. I'm a little bit nervous today because it's been a while. You know what it's like when you don't do something for a long time. So this documentary that you'll be seeing 
was, oh, I have the paper right here. It won second prize for the Alliance for the Community, for Community Media in the Northeast region. region. That means that Eleanor Pye, who did the documentary, you'll see her in the video. She was sitting in the car behind me, and they also had a bicycle cart that they use to carry their equipment instead of a big old truck. And they used a hand camera. Now remember, this is nine years ago, so they don't have, or maybe, maybe it's 10 years ago. It's this 2002 is when I carried it. So you can do these things. Anybody can do these things. And I ended up being a storyteller. I wrote for all the newspapers in the Boston Globe, 119 newspapers in the Somerville, Medford, Cambridge. When I moved out here, I was able to write for the, a couple of little stories for the Gazette and a couple written a column for the um, Republican. I know, they don't always talk to each other. But the, these are the things that you get for when you, when you learn at community access television. So that's my story, and if you need anything else, let me know. to do my Olympic run. I'm so excited. This is for all women. Just want you to know this is for all women, no matter. Oh, I'm going to get up front of the police car. I can ride in front? Yes, <laughs> Because I've performed at SCAT so many times, I don't get nervous before anything. You know, prior to that, I used to get nervous for two days before. This time, I didn't get nervous until 2 o'clock. <laughs> so, I only have an hour to be nervous now. So I'm trying to behave nicely because I'm on camera and not show my absolute terror. <laughs> Susan Lamphia from the library, is, East British Library, is a friend of mine. And she had to work today, so she can't come. She called me to wish me luck. She's got such a sweet personality. And she, with her lovely voice, said, now Peggy. Remember, don't fall. <laughs> but if you do, fall gracefully. So I had this vision of me going, I'm falling. And I was falling gracefully. I managed to keep the torch off the ground. The following is the winning essay for Peggy Melanson, one of the 2002 Olympic torchbearers. Overcoming obstacles has been a lifelong accomplishment for Peggy Melanson. While struggling with cancer, she wrote Buddha on the Bus, a series of inspirational short stories about her travels to and from cancer treatments. This remarkable late bloomer has spent the last several years teaching and inspiring others around New England how to achieve worthwhile goals with her Finding the Courage to Create workshops. Her storytelling performances, stonescape painting classes at schools, libraries, and garden centers are examples of her passion to teach others how to confront and wow. overcome adversity. I'm very good that they have to, oh, this looks good on me. Oh, thank you, Michael. Michael, I'm Peggy. Peggy? Yeah, isn't in this great? <laughs> From New York, Yonkers. <laughs> I, well, we'll talk when And what are you doing here? Linda's gonna lead the way. You're in New York I'm and you can't get upstairs. But I thought they were supposed to send you with another friend that you put a short to go. Send me wherever you want to send me. How'd you get here? Drove away. From, um, Drove? Stone. Stone. This is the person that's handing me my light. He's lighting my torch. Give them your name, and where you're from, and what your story is. Okay, uh, I'm, my name is Eric Mellison. I'm from Brazil, and I'm also the, uh, the bobsled pilot for Brazil. We qualify for the Olympics, and we'll be there uh, for the first time in the Olympics. So we're very happy. My name is Dick Smitley, and uh, I work as a custodian in public schools. And I'm also affiliated with the Dana-Farber Marathon Challenge. And come to find out that a lot of the teachers at the school nominated me, along with the people from the Dana-Farber. And that's how I've become one of the torchbearers, I guess. They picked it. And uh, also, I had a stroke a year ago. And uh, I've overcome that. And a lot of people, my doctors are even amazed that I'm even out running because they figured 
that I couldn't be back running ever. So I've overcome a lot in the last year, but it's a great honor to be able to uh, carry the torch and be a, such a small part of a big thing. From what I understand, the uh, people in purple are support runners, so we protect the uh, people in white. We run on their sides. So. Protect them from? I have no idea. Um, hopefully nothing too much. But <laughs> yeah, we just run with them basically. We're support runners in case anything happens. I guess uh, from a national perspective, a lot of the uh, torchbearers, some of them are either uh, handicapped or have other impediments. And uh, we assist them if they need be. I'm, I'm from Virginia, but I go to school up here. so. Um, I guess people from my community back home nominated me, and since I wasn't in that area, they uh, put me up here. So. Well, um, where do you go to school, and are you a runner anyway? Uh, I go to Harvard, and uh, I run, but more on a uh, leisurely and just exercise level. Nothing uh, organized right now. So. Yeah. I had a brain hemorrhage in sixth grade, and I've had eight brain surgeries, and I had to go to Spalding Rehab Hospital, and my dance teacher is the case manager, and she wanted me to represent for Spalding, and she called me, and I said I would do it. So that's how I got to do it. Okay, and what's your name, and how old are you? Leslie Anderson, and I'm 13. Out of the hallway real quick. happened to be doing an extraordinary thing. So why don't you tell us why you're here, who you are, where you're from, and why you're here. My name's Paul Palangin. I'm from Belmont, Massachusetts, and I've been asked to run in memory of my late father, who died in 1996. How did you, how did that come about? He was a, a, a dear friend of Mitt Romney, and uh, I think a very valued member of the Boston community, so uh, it's a great honor for me to be doing this. That's great. That's a wonderful story. What about you? My name is Fred Knapp, and I'm from, from Duxbury, Massachusetts. And my three sons, age 31, 28, and 27, nominated me as a, um, a birthday gift uh, because um, I'm, I guess I'm a good father. Well, I guess it worked. <laughs> I guess they believed it. Yeah, so. That's great. Are they going to be here today? They are. They'll be over on Hampshire Street between Tremont and Union, which is where I'll be running for them. Excellent. Look forward to seeing them. Wonderful. <laughs> well, let me scoot over on this side and find out where you're, where you're from and why you're here. 
I am Jim Fowler from Stone, Massachusetts, and I'm here. Uh, Coca-Cola nominated me to be here because of, uh, they knew my, my both my daughters in high school uh, really enjoyed um, cross-country track and winter track and all, and uh, they thought that would be a uh, fitting tribute for their father. So. so they've been doing all the running, so they said, hey, here you go. You can run a couple tents. That's great. So they're going to be here today? and. Yep, they'll be on uh, Mass Ave with uh, the rest of the family uh, cheering on all the torch bears. Wonderful. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. I'm from Alabama. So did you, like, fly here, and are you going to be driving the bus the whole time? Uh, we, we started in Atlanta, so I just drove over there. We got there about a week before the flame did, and we've been on the road since then. So you go with the flame. Are you going all the way to Utah with the flame? All the way. That's awesome. <laughs> So you're the official shuttle bus driver for the flame across well, the country. There's, there's nine of us, so we think of it this way. There's 11,520 torchbearers, but only nine guys that drive them. So what's your name again? I'm Ray. My name is Mary Lou McCusker. Um I'm from Cape Cod. Actually, I was born and raised in Whalen, Mass, outside of Boston. And I was nominated from friends and coworkers and just you know, out of the goodness of people's heart, just really good friends nominated me to, to participate. So that's pretty cool. So you ended up here. It's just really neat. Yeah, and I'm with my Aunt Jane. She's our one member of our family who's come to watch, which is cool. So I noticed uh, a little while ago you were actually holding a torch. Was that the, the first, because everybody's starting to pass it around now. How come you were holding it? Is that the first one to set out? Or? I think that um, Dick just wanted to give it to me to try and take, get a feel for it, which was really nice. And um, yeah, it's not that heavy. I thought it was a lot heavier. It's not that heavy at all. Well, it looks like actually that you guys are starting to load up. So uh, I think we better let you go or else uh, there'll be a gap in the line. I'm so excited. This is absolutely the best time I have ever had. Have you gotten to hold the torch yet? Have I gotten to hold? No, I touched it. Did you? You didn't? I touched the torch. It is a little top heavy. Oh boy. Well, you know, just just keep it together. Hold it. You know, you'll you'll do fine. Just worried about dropping it. supporters here and um, we have two of Peggy's biggest fans Lisa and Linda Yay! and um, tell us why you're here today oh because we're so proud of my mom for making it this far and for being an incredible role model for all of us and, and for the Olympic torch you know we we're supporting the Olympics she really has taught us just how to be a strong woman and how just to um, go through obstacles and not treat them as obstacles, just to really go for it. And so we're really psyched that she's really going for it and we're really proud of her. So, all right, Peggy! And why do you support Peggy? Oh, because Peggy's a wonderful person. She's a great storyteller and she's always there supporting me when I tell stories. And so we share a lot together and I wanted to be there for her today.
the end of the run, this is what happens. So in case anyone else gets an opportunity to carry this torch, this is what happens at the end of the run. Somebody has to put the flame out. I forgot about that. Who, who's going to know that when you're all excited carrying the torch and your family's there and all this? So we pull up. I light the other fellow's torch. We give each other a kiss, kiss. And then I turn around and the crowd comes and my kids are there and the kids are interviewed and they're all, everybody's so happy. And then we end up with the motorcycle coming up close to me and a fellow reaches out from the motorcycle, puts his hand out and says, I need that torch. I don't remember his exact words, but it was sort of like that. Now we have a lit torch and I went, what do you mean? I pulled the torch back. No, you could not going to have this torch. I had to pay for that torch, just so you know. You don't get this for free. You don't get the torch for free. But I'll get into that in a minute. But in any case, he reaches over again. He goes, no, no, I have to put it out. And I went, oh, well, yeah, okay. So I held on to that real tight. And then when I brought the torch close to him, I realized that it was Mitt Romney on the motorcycle. And I'm holding the torch. There's a little hole in the side of the torch that you stay, he stuck something in it and took the torch. But he was holding on to the bottom of it while he did that. And I was like, no, he's not going to get my torch. So basically, I looked at him and didn't realize, did not realize that, you know, nine years later or 10 or whatever it is, he's going to be running for president. <laughs> All I know was that he was the big shot with the, the 2002 Winter Olympics in Utah. And now we're in Somerville. But anyway, he puts the, he puts the torch out, and uh, I clutch it to me. And then we had a big party at uh, a local restaurant where everybody came, and it was, everybody wanted to hold the torch. And I have a picture of a little boy uh, that came up to me, and I let him hold the torch. Then there was another little boy standing with his mother. And I said, would you like to hold it? And he went, oh, no. Oh, no. I said, well, would you like to touch it? So he reached over and he touched the top, put his fingers inside the top, and he came away with Olympic soot on his fingers. And he looked up at me from behind his mother where he had just touched the torch, and he said, oh, I'm not going to wash this hand forever. Isn't that beautiful? There's a picture of another little boy on my website. You'll see. Uh, where he's standing there holding the torch and he has this, the cutest little face on him. It's funny because you'd think somebody around five or six years old wouldn't understand the magnitude of this. But a lot of times the kids do. They do understand it. And I think it's wonderful that they have opportunities like this and parents bring them out so they can see this. And I, we even had some, one of my neighbors bring her little infant out and she's holding up the infant for me to see. And we had channels uh, five and seven and all these uh, television stations, helicopters. And when I, when I passed the torch uh, off to my partner, uh, it was funny because one of the f Channel 5 people, I think it was Channel 5, that said, and she's passing the torch to the next fellow. Oh, because it's not the torch you pass, it's just the light. We did pass the light at the end as I mentioned earlier. But in all in all, it's a mag magnificent thing to be able to do this, and it's really cool to be able to do it in your own house. Uh, own house, well, in your own neighborhood. So thank you very much. Hope you enjoy that video.